In the headlines, no life lost as another building collapses in Lagos. Police arrest Kujie Prison SKP in Ogun. National Youth Council say unemployment is responsible for vote buying. And on the foreign scene, South Africa bar owner arrested over death of 21 teens. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Hello and welcome once again. Now, authorities in Lagos say no life was lost after a two-story building collapsed in the Palm Grove area of Lagos State on Wednesday. Public Relations Officer of the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, in the southwest region, Ibrahim Fariloy, who confirmed the incident, said the building was still in use before it crashed at about 12 midnight. Fariloy said the four families who were in the building as at the time of the incident escaped to safety. Also speaking, the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency said the building has been cordoned off. Wednesday's incident is the latest in chains of building collapses recorded in Lagos as the government works to stop the trend. And one of the Kujie Correctional Center SKPs was on Monday arrested by operatives of the Ogun State Police Command. A statement by the State Police Public Relations Officer Bimbola Oyeyemi said the SKP, 28-year-old Yakubu Abdul Mumini, was arrested following information received by a policeman at Shango Ota Division, Divisional Headquarters that the convict was cited somewhere around Shango Ota. The, he confessed to the police that he escaped from Kujia Correctional Center on the 5th of July 2022 when the center was attacked by bandits. He stated further that he was convicted by Kogi State High Court for conspiracy and culpable homicide and sent to Kujie Correctional Center. And to health matters, where the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has confirmed 357 new cases of COVID-19 among the wave of fresh infections resurging in parts of the country. In a tweet on Tuesday, the NCDC said the fresh infections were confirmed between July 9th and 11th. This brings the total number of confirmed cases in the country to 258,874 since the first COVID-19 case was reported in late February 2020. Of the confirmed cases, 250,456 people have been discharged, while the number of those who died from complications related to the disease stand at 3,144. These cases were reported in five states and the Federal Capital Territory. The President of the National Youth Council of Nigeria, NYCN, Sukubo Saregbe Sukubo, has identified poverty and unemployment as the major causes of vote buying. To this end, he is urging government at all levels to address the issues in order to put a stop to the trend in the country. Speaking in Ori during a one-day North Central Zonal Youth Leadership Summit, the NYCN president and other speakers also advised state governors to prioritize youth engagement to curb restiveness. These speakers commended Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrazak of Kwara State for including youth in his administration. They said that the development has gone a long way in promoting the skills and intellectual capabilities of youth and promised to support his second term bid. Now, 95% of uh, his cabinet are uh, domiciled with the youth constituency. It gives me joy, and I applaud the governor, and I thank him so much. And it has also, um, also pushed the National Youth Council of Nigeria to look inward to give the governor total support for all for his administration and for his second term in office. We want other state governments to tap from the um, vision of the executive governor of Kwara State in making sure that young people are given a right of place. We are talking about youth inclusion, we are talking about um, and, um, female participation in politic, politics, affirmative action from right to left, how do we initiate it? The young people have came here to speak to themselves. 
and use the Kwara State as an example. Of course, the continuous voter registration is also going on. It doesn't stop at getting voters' cards. They must be part and parcel of their society, and they must choose leaders. They must take part in the process of choosing leaders. And not only process, they should also aspire for positions. Of course, the moment you are qualified under the law, why not? Of course, because it is by that, it's by getting involved in the process that we can and not be complaining against the system. And still talking politics, the crisis rocking River State chapter of the All Progressives Congress, APC, has deepened following resignation of key members of the party in the state. While the members are yet to get over the shock of the resignation of strong supporters of the leader of the party in the state, a former governorship aspirant in the state, Tonye Principal, has also resigned his membership. The report. Reacting to the development, the APC Assistant Publicity Secretary in the state, Darlington Umwauju, described some of the defectors as those who have added value to the party. Politics in Nigeria is not ideologically based. And so you see this uh, sort of thing when once it comes to transition seasons. A few of the individuals that had made the uh, valuable contributions to the growth of the party in time past. But Majority of those who have resigned are persons who have for long left the party, technically speaking. And so, uh, 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 turning in resignations on social media and all that, some of them even with uh, party letterhead papers, showing that they do not even understand what uh, they are doing. Darlington, while commenting on Tinubu's speak, expressed optimism that a presidential candidate would have consulted widely before making his choice. Meanwhile, some residents of Portacot said Nigerians should focus on the value the candidate may add in achieving good governance, rather than focusing on religion as the basics for choosing political leaders. The onus uh, lies on a presidential or governorship candidate to decide who should be on that joint ticket with them. So I, I believe that um, the candidate must have consulted widely before making a choice. So we'll leave with that. Unless we leave religion aside, whatever is the situation of this country, right, we can get it right. But if we continue to talk about religion, uh, this person is a Christian, this person is a Muslim, it has nothing to do with people's moral. We keep on talking about one seat alone or two seats alone. We talk about the presidency and the vice presidency. People don't talk about the National Assembly, which is by law in a democratic government, this is the people that make the law. The issue of his um, religion shouldn't have been a very serious issue if not for the level of religious rife and unnecessary um, escalation of uh, religious interest. What would have been mo more reasonable would have been the issue of our regions. But again, beyond the issue of region. However, there are reports that more APC members may defect, but there are no mention of the defectors joining other parties. Meanwhile, former Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Baba Chirilawal, has rejected Senator Kashim Shetima as the vice presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress APC in the 2023 elections. In a statement on Tuesday night, Baba Chiru, who had been a vocal supporter of Tinubu, condemned the action of the presidential candidate and urged President Muhammadu Buhari to exercise his powers as the commander in chief and as the APC leader to revoke Shetima's nomination. He also said that Tinubu must also be told that there will be consequences for his choice as some Christians will revolt against the APC and this will put the chances of his election in serious jeopardy. And still talking politics, the Nasiha on Political Development Initiative of the Ummah has called on religious leaders to focus on issue-based campaigns rather than religious-inclined agitations that will aggravate the challenges of peace and security affecting the country. The National Coordinator and Chief Imam of the Federal University of Technology, Mina Bashir Yankuzo, and the National Secretary, Saini Idris, said this in a statement in Mina, the Niger state capital, while reacting to protests against the Muslim Muslim ticket by the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN. They pointed out that the decision of political parties to present a Muslim Muslim ticket has never been dictated by any Muslim organization, 
but rather party internal affairs that has to do with winning projections and south-north zoning arrangement. The forum advised the agitations for domination in politics should not dominate political discourse at this critical period when Nigeria is faced with several socio-economic challenges that required all hands to be on deck to find a lasting solution to the problems. The forum also noted that taking into cognizance the fragility of Nigeria's juvenile democracy and too many challenges that confront her unity and mutual coexistence, there was an urgent need to draw the attention of religious leaders and some Christian clerics to refrain from fanning religious intolerance and mistrust among citizens. Action Aid Nigeria has trained 315 electoral observers to monitor the July 16th governorship election in Oshun State. Country Director Action Aid Nigeria, NAOB, at the training exercise charged the election observers drawn from various local government areas of the state to be objective in their reporting. Hamid Oegbadi reports that Obi, who is also the convener of Nigeria Civil Society Situation Room on election, warned election observers not to interfere with the process, but to only observe and note their observations. The essence of this meeting ah. is to train 300 observers and redeploy them to the communities, to, the, to all of the local governments. They have come from all far and wide, you know, and, and uh, at the end of the day, we deploy them to monitor the logistics of a deployment of uh, INEC to different locations. At the end of the day, we hope we will give the report. We will see some of the lessons. We will look at the lessons from me and see how INEC can also tidy itself. Give the report. Normally, we give the report to make sure they, they, we see gaps and lessons that have come from there. At the end, we make our, our reports to them. We hope that uh, getting the locals, these are not coming from outside the uh, Oshu State. They are all from Oshu State and they are all from the local government. We we'll believe AKT coming from AKT, we have lessons from there. Now we are better off, we are happy, we hope that we can get to the next level. We hope that the contribution from there will also be something that will make the 2023 election better. Now to matters of security where the Jigar State Police Command on Wednesday said its operatives have arrested a suspected drug dealer identified as 33-year-old Mahdi Salisu of Taura Town alongside nine suspected criminals following a raid on criminal hideouts and black spots at Ungwar Gabas in Taura local government area of the state. The command's spokesperson, DSP Shizuma Adam, in a statement said intelligence gathering led to the arrest of the drug dealer. The statement further said operatives found 102 wraps and some dried leaves in a nylon bag suspected to be Indian hemp in his possession. The statement said the suspects will be charged to court at the end of the investigations. Meanwhile, the Commissioner of Police, Chicago State Police Command, CP Aliu Tefida, noted that raids on criminal hideouts and black spots will continue in the entire state. You are watching Trust TV News Update. And still to come on the news, how menial workers earn livelihood in Abuja. Details of this and more after the break. Stay with us.
Welcome back and thanks for staying with us on Trust TV News Update. Now another look at our top stories. No life lost as another building collapses in Lagos. And police arrest Kujie Prison SKP in Ogun. And moving on to other stories now. In preparation for the first fully digital census in 2023, the National Population Commission, NPC, will commence its trial census on Wednesday in Anambra State. Federal Commissioner representing Anambra State, Chidi Zioki, said the exercise will take place in all seven designated towns, Akuku, Akwa Etiti, Alo, Nokwa, Nobi, Oba and Ojoto in Idemili South local government area of the state. Ezeoke further disclosed that the commission has trained 1,146 enumerators and local government supervisors to conduct the exercise in the above mentioned local government area of the state. He explained that the exercise will avail the commission of the opportunity to test all aspects of census operations from planning to implementation, logistics arrangements and management, questionnaire design and format, training procedures. Now, Abuja is one of the fastest growing cities in the world, attracting hundreds of menial workers who struggle to earn a living. Kabir Lawal speaks with a cross-section of youth in the city on how they struggle to make ends meet. The report. <laughs> Menial workers are often classified as low-income earners in the society because of the nature of the job. However, youths do not picture themselves handling such jobs. But lack of employment in the country has forced these youths to be engaged in such manual jobs. Some youths revealed to Trust TV correspondent that before these are times, things were better. But going by the high cost of living and difficulties in getting jobs, made them to take on anything that can put food on the table. Like we now here that we now have enough cash to buy some instrument. So we have to come and look for small things. Because the country now <laughs> come by like talk, let's get a minute like this. My mother and I don't call me now say I send two thousand for her. If you small 10,000, I don't got that, and I want to send 2,000 for her like this. You see? Family. Now, maybe first ball, no, but still on still. Talk. If you go, my baby person help you, my make you a push up for you. Okay, bros, I do so. I do so well. Fashion designer, if I so for you. Eh. They called on well many Nigerians and the government to come up with programs and projects that should change the current and ugly. Narrative. Politicians, they don't want to give us work. Work to do. They say go work, go work. We find school go. They don't give us school. The education man, we thank God. We they try, we they read, we they write, we they depend ourselves for some kind of places. And the small power we they get, don't be say we they get job rich like the way we they work. But we see they appreciate. They don't say that's stealing. Now we will not want. Some of them even showed off their musical skills. Life na jeje na jeje. Everything na turn by turn. If you turn rich, you also go blue. Observers believe young people are in their need of change that can give them opportunity to be part of meaningful development in the country and beyond. It is of paramount importance that in life, no talent is wasted. This is what they do here and they sing, dance with joy to make ends meet and put food on the table for themselves. In Abuja, Kabir Lowell, Tross TV News. The Aran Egong and paramount ruler of Egong in Nasara State, Balangwazu, is dead. The Dangaladima Egong, James Angwazu, confirmed the development on Wednesday in Lafia. He said the Aran Egong died on Wednesday at the age of 89 after a protracted illness. Angwazu, who was installed on July 11, 1981, died after 41 years on the throne. And now to business news, where the value of Nigeria's cosmetic retail sales grew by an average of 14.5% last year and added hundreds of billions of naira to the economy. 
A report by Euromonitor reveals that hair and oral care led the performance with 17% growth, while bath and shower was at, sat at the bottom at 8% yearly growth. The report covers 11 subcategories of cosmetics, including mass, beauty, personal care, skin care, hair care, deodorants, bath and shower, and men's grooming. Others are baby care, oral care, fragrances, premium beauty and personal care, and sun care. The sector recorded a turnover of 1.034 trillion naira in the year, with mass beauty and personal care controlling 45.5% or 470 billion naira in absolute figures. The Tanzanian High Commissioner to Nigeria, Benson Bana, says the adoption of Kiswahili as Africa's official language by the African Union will help unite, strengthen the continent, and bridge diversity. Bana made this known in Abuja during a pre-event media briefing ahead of the World Kiswahili Language Day inaugural celebration on July 14th. Bana said the adoption of a working language among African countries will foster the integration of the AU agenda and realization of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. According to the High Commissioner, the AU adopted Kiswahili as the continent's official language in February 2022, as it is the most spoken language on the continent among almost 300 million AU citizens. We should take our diversities as our strength. The reason why I think this decision would have been made long ago to have a unifying factor, a language that unifies Africa. In Africa now we have, we are at the AU level, it's English, it's French, it's uh, uh, Arabic, it's uh, uh, Portuguese sometimes, and why not Kiswahili? Why not Hausa? Notwithstanding our diversities, having a common language, and today Kiswahili is a right decision at the right time and in the right direction. Now for a look at the foreign scene where the owner of a bar in the South African coastal town of East London where 21 teenagers mysteriously died last month, has been arrested, police in the Eastern Cape province have said. The provincial police, in a statement, said the 52-year-old owner was arrested over the weekend, while two employees at the tavern were subsequently arrested on Tuesday. The owner is now expected to appear before the East London Magistrate Court on August 19th to face charges after an investigation that focused on the alleged supply of alcohol to minors. Forensic teams are yet to reveal their conclusions on how the teens died. And in sports, Rivers United will be presented with the Nigeria Professional Football League trophy following their game with Gombe United on July 17th. Rivers United were confirmed as champions on July, June 26, following Plateau United's defeat at the hands of Alqua United. The league management company will present the trophy this Sunday after March Day 38 clash against Gombe United at the Adokia Amesiamaka Stadium. Should Rivers United avoid defeat in their final match, they will beat their own record total of 74 points set on March Day 36 and become the first team to top 75 points in a season. And that wraps up Trust TV News update for this hour. For more news, you can subscribe and follow us across all our social media platforms. I am Ibrahim Yusuf. Thanks for watching.